Welcome to another video of making Songbringer. This is day 600, well, episode 665. I'm working on um, <clears throat> iOS version. I've got this, uh, the control is a lot smoother now. So you got this, uh, your button here down in the bottom right. All your other buttons are down here. Kind of easily accessible. There's a little animation that happens when you use them. Um, <clears throat> so today, I've been working on a few refinements. One little issue is that when you start up, the quantities for items are not visible. Another one is that um, everything works here in the menu. You can even drag and drop items from your equipment into your equipped uh, but, and you can even warp, so like if I click on something, it'll bring up the warp interface, click on it again, it brings it up like you want to confirm it, you click it one last time and you can teleport there. But the ship, when you click on the ship, it does not bring up the teleport inter interface, neither does uh, clicking on map one bring up the uh, switch map thing. So that's what I'm gonna work on first. Because pretty much the whole game is functional now, except for that last warp thing. So I just get that warp thing working, we'll be good to go. So first thing to do would be to find that bit of code where it um, brings up the warp interface. Here's where it creates the warp, confirm. Uh, no, there's gonna be no Android version. Only iOS. Uh, the reason being that iOS was what was promised in the Kickstarter, and Android was not promised that we didn't reach that stretch goal. So um, it's just way expensive to make, it's expensive as far as time and money goes. To develop for Android so um, we didn't hit that stretch goal so iOS is gonna be it and then finally Songbringer is gonna be done and I'll be able to start my next game right here's where it brings up the confirmation I thought there was some other place in this warp confirm where it brought it up dimmed. Oh, there it is. Hey, what's up, Virtual Zist? How you doing? Okay, so here's the thing that's not working. Why is this not happening? This is an interface select. Yeah, doing good, man. It's Mother's Day. I gotta remember to call my mother today. It's only like 6 a.m. in the United States, so I can't call her yet. Okay, that's where it does that. Scroll step, stop existing choices, get the choices, move the cursor, animate the cursor. Okay, why isn't this working? We change the cursor. That works. Dim the gear, show the warp confirmed dimmed. 
Okay, I guess we got to set a break point. Like, why does the warp confirm work for some spots, but not others? So we got a break point set there. Oh, it's, sorry, man. No, that's uh, true. It's not the same date pretty much anywhere. Oh yeah, yours is in two weeks. Like, uh, I looked online. I was like, when is Mother's Day? And because I'm in Thailand right now, it, sh it said August 31st. I'm like, August? That's totally wrong. It's definitely not August. And I was like, oh, it gave me the the day for Thailand's. Thailand has a Mother Day in August. So, yeah. The United States is is this Sunday. So if you're if you're you guys are watching from the United States, remember it's Mother's Day today. But otherwise, don't freak out. You're all good. I'm excited to get these last little touches finished here on this iOS version so I can actually do a playthrough. Like this is the one of the last functional things left to do. Everything functions fine. And uh, because of this new layout for the buttons and the new little animations that happen when you play, like it's feeling really good. When I actually install this on my iPhone and play it, it feels really good. Everything about it is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. It's good as it can be as far as touch controls go. There will also be support for made for iPhone game controllers. So that will be one of the next steps I have to do. But the first thing to do is to nail down the touch controls. Make sure they're totally dope. Okay, so let's enable this breakpoint. And we'll click on the ship. Figure out what the hell. You're gonna give your Les Paul to your mom? Wow. Oh, the, you, the body's too wide for you? Dude, I love Les Pauls. Yeah, that sounds like a great gift, man. Nice. Oh, okay, so we got this. Why is, uh, we got the, is the warp confirmed? The warp confirms fine. Should be external. Yeah, good. It's external. Why? Okay, so it's working. Warp confirms said position. So select is being called from Van Halen Mobiles. Finger choice. Stop all actions. Can we teleport there? Yes, it's external. Yes, both of those are working too. What the heck? Oh, it's not external. Oh. Okay. You're just supposed to freaking... You don't show the warp confirm dimmed, you just confirm right away. That's right. So instead of just, you have to, more than just select, you have to confirm right away? Gosh, I gotta see how it works on Mac version. Do we have a price range for the iOS version? No, not yet. 
So um, that's it's the iOS version is going to be published by my publisher, um, just like the Xbox version and uh, the PlayStation Four version. So they'll kind of have the ultimate say as far as what the price will be. Um, and so yeah, there's lots of different ideas. I'm not sure exactly. You know, it'll be it won't be as expensive as the the Steam or the console versions. But uh, other than that, I can't really tell you much. Or I don't know much. To tell you the truth. It's kind of just still up in the air. Okay, so I gotta remember how it works on the Mac version. I'm pretty sure you just um, as soon as you give it the, you press the, the the. Oh yeah, you just press the you select and then press the A button. That's all. Oh, so we just haven't pressed the A button. Oh, this probably makes sense now. Okay, so we select there and it brings up the warp confirm, but he, oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. So if I press the A button, not the B button, not anything else, but just the A button. Oh, that's right, duh. Oh, but the ship has to bring up the warp confirm. Okay, that's enough memory jogging for now. Okay, so we need to press the A button if it's an external position. Okay, input mobile. Um, where does that select at? Here we go. Okay, so here's where we're selecting that finger choice. What's up, Kobayo? The publisher I'm working with, their name is Double Eleven. They're great. Let me give you their. I think it's just double. I think it's just double eleven dot com. Yeah. How Steam sales work? Like, to ask or enable sales if it's. Just the same percentage as this. Um, I'm actually, you can't actually talk about that. There's, I signed like a con, when you sign up with Steam, you sign up like an NDA, you can't talk about the back end, the sales, the percentages, things like that. So, just so I don't get in trouble, <laughs> I can't talk about it. Some things I just can't share. Sorry about that. Normally I like to share everything. And normally I would share everything. But this is one of those things where I'm contractually bound to not say anything. Why did I choose to go with them and not solo publishing? Uh, this was, I decided to go with them far before Steam was released. Um, that was Cobile, that was a, a really, um, Really big, it's such a good question. Um, I debated on that for months and months. Um, this publisher actually approached me during the Kickstarter. So, um, like I was doing the Kickstarter and they, they said, hey, if your Kickstarter doesn't quite make its goal, we'd still back you, we like your game. We think it's really cool that you're a solo developer. Um, and so anyways, they kind of we kind of like started a relationship then. And, uh, when the Kickstarter money ran out, like like six months later, it was just went up like like that. Even though I was living frugally, um, I decided, you know what, this game needs more support, and either it's gonna have to come out right now, if and I'm gonna have to solo, solo publish it right now, 
or else I'm going to work with this publisher and make this game really awesome. And so because I, because I was backed by Double Eleven, Songbringer got to be way better than it would have been because I got to spend like an extra two years more than I would have sub solo publishing it. So they, they not only enabled me to make the game way better, but they also helped me publish it on um, consoles. So there's no way I could have actually gotten Songbringer done on Steam and the Xbox version and the, the PlayStation 4 version. The Xbox and the PlayStation 4 versions, they require their own engines. Like it's a different engine. You have to completely reprogram everything about your underlying engines for both of those platforms. It's different than, than all your Windows versions and everything. Um, your desktop versions, I mean. So anyways. And the other thing is they, you know, they fronted the cash to get the to get me to places like E3 and uh, PAX East and um like gdc like they they really they're an amazing publisher i'm actually they're one of the best things i've found on my entire journey so really excited to have found them and uh and definitely one of the best decisions i made was working with them i definitely do not regret regret that but that said i really did debate for a long time on whether i should just stick on my own and solo publish because Years and years ago, I worked with a publisher, and my publisher was really, really bad to me. I won't say their name. It was This was like over 20 years ago, when I first started making games in the 1990s. I had a publisher, and they were evil, completely evil. It was like one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, and uh, anyways, this publisher that I found, Double Eleven, they're like the complete opposite. They're incredible, incredible people. So anyways, sorry about that rant. Yes, they did. They they made the console versions of Limbo. Yeah. Um, also, um, Prison Architect, most recently, and a lot of other games. Okay, so when we're selecting um, here, if it's an external, we want to do... So, if... Finger uh, choice. Let's get the position. Let's just press the A button real quick and see if that. So we want to set the A button down. This is going to be conditional. But for now, okay, so we'll set a breakpoint here. It's the iOS version, good. Okay, we don't need these old breakpoints, and let's run that. Exactly. Yes, Kabal. Right. So they they took my source code for the Steam version, which ran on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and they basically, um, you know, they they did a lot. They um they basically had to rewrite the Cocos 2DX engine. Well, not rewrite it. They basically created a layer. Um. It, that emulated Cocos 2DX, the game engine that I use, but uses their own engine. So, because they have their own rad engine for PlayStation and Xbox, it runs fast. It, like it's really, really well written. Um, and so, they basically just created a layer that worked with their own engine, and so that they really didn't have to do much more than that. Well, there was a lot. There was a lot more too. There's a lot of interface changes and things like that they had to do. So, and then, the, and then there's a lot more to do as far as like publishing and s stores and like setups and metadata and oh my god, submitting apps, approval, dude, there's like a lot of work to do. Runaway Christians? What? Yeah, 
Yeah, you're making casual games? Yeah, cool. All right, sweet. So we're pressing this. Let's see what position that is. Oh no, that's not what we wanted. Not the node. We wanted the menu item position. But let's see if it actually works. Right? It brought that up. Oh, sweet, it worked. Okay, so we want the choice. Oh, trying to use Vim commands here. Okay, let's go back to pause. And then we'll do a safe expression. Finger.choice, get menu item, M, M, I mean pause equals M, get position if I think it's gonna be like if pause dot y is greater than a hundred or something like that then we press in the A button Okay, let's get that compiling. And we got a breakpoint ready to roll. Oh, it's the 665th dev session. Oh, sweet. So next one's going to be the 666th. What an auspicious day. I always thought the name, the number 666 is pretty cool. Like, it's like a third, you know, like 333, but just times two. I, I don't see why people are so afraid of it. I know it's the devil's number or whatever, but... Make all the colors inverted? Sure. Yeah, I gotta do something special for the next stream. Thanks for reminding me. Gosh. Oh, uh, you guys still there? Oh, no. Internet just died. I think we're back. No, son of a what? Oh. <sighs> the only way I've found a stream here in Thailand is on, well, in this island I'm on is. On my 4G internet, and for some reason, my phone just decided to not have internet all of a sudden. I don't know what that was, but I think we're back. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's get this running again. I have this really touchy connection with my, <laughs> my iPhone. It like I'll plug it in, and sometimes it goes... Like the plugged in, the the powering icon goes on and off and on and off and on and off. Sometimes it stays on. 
So I think what happened right there was it might have just turned itself off. I don't know. Okay, let's bring up the menu. Okay, now we got the breakpoint. Click on the ship. Our pause is 192. So this needs to be about 180. Brings up that. What if we bring up this? This one's pause is 192 as well. All right, that changes the warp. Okay, cool. And what if I were to click on this one right here? What's the pause there? 156? Okay. Let's go back to map zero. Oh, wait, we gotta click play. Play. Yes. You guys there? Is it working? Did I mess it up again? It looks like the stream's okay. Sorry about that. I did have an outage right there. <laughs> and we were we were out. I was out. 156, okay. Let's get one more test where we are in like a really deep dungeon, like I'm thinking like dungeon nine, or I mean eight. Yeah, wait. Go there. And I think this should be about 180. And let's run that. Resource format not supported. Did you try refreshing? It's probably my fault. I just had to reset this the stream there. Ah, sorry about that. Dang. I don't know what's up. That one. One fifty six. I guess we could make this 190. Okay, so let's close Xcode. That'll help us run a little faster. And uh, I think this has got we got something workable here. So this is kind of a janky solution to decide if uh, it's an external war position, but there's really no other way to simply check if one of those one of these choices is uh, an external position inside of this separate file. In, this is input mobile. This is a special source file only for mobile stuff. And so basically, this is kind of a janky solution, but it's workable. And so basically this just presses the A button if you select one of these external positions. Let's make sure it works here. Nice, it works on mobile. All right, cool. I don't know what's up with that. Probably had something to do with how I had to just restart the stream on my end. Definitely has to do with that, I'm sure. So my dang internet just went out 
all of a sudden I looked down at my phone and my hotspot was wasn't working. I have to run I have to run this stream off of four G internet on my phone. It's a hotspot. It's hard to read. Oh, I'm sorry. So if you're following along this stream, I'm working on the iOS version. Uh, this is one of the last things to get right here is just uh, making this um, map menu work so you can warp to um, these external positions. So if you click on the ship, for example, let's see if that works. Nice, you can tap the ship and it brings that up right away and you can warp. Whoa, it works. That's great. Okay, so let's warp some other places. Let's make sure this, this map can toggle itself too. So if we click on this map, it should just immediately switch to map eight. Nice. This should immediately switch to map zero. Good. This should not be able to do anything. Good. It just allow, it allows me to select it, but it doesn't allow me to actually warp there. Okay, good. If I click on this, it should bring up the warp confirm dimmed. Oh! It probably would be better to actually bring that up right away. So, because you're already on mobile, you're already selecting something purposefully. Yeah, let's do that. So this should, okay, so this code that I just wrote, should, you should press the A button. This The mobile should emulate the A button every time it's a warp position. Okay, so we need to know warp positions somehow better. How can we do that? Google Assistant? Oh, oh, you have like a... <laughs> you have like a voice activated thing or something because and it activated because of what I said? That's funny. Okay, okay. Uh... <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, we need to, we need a better way. This shows the warp confirmed dimmed if you select it. All right, but well, we want to go to the other interfaces. We want to ask for confirmation right away. Okay, so what is area pause? Is that really all the way up there? No, that's area pause, world get pause. Okay. Okay, that can demulate this. It's not that hard. Okay. So we want to be able to do like this too.
What? Okay, so we got teleport destinations. Um, okay, we need to get the, um, the position, what was this one? It's confusing me. We need to get the position from the name of the node, V3IP name. Okay, V3IP, this is from finger choice get node no I mean just node node get name Oh, okay, cool. So if not p dot it is valid, if p dot is valid, um, We can look up whether this is a warp point. And then we can do if the pause is greater than that or is a warp point. Okay, so we need to do some more debugging. Got to bring Xcode back up. Oh, okay. That's where our breakpoint's gonna be. <clears throat> Let's get this running. Oh, whoops. This is world. Get a pause. the hell oh I'm in really <laughs> it, it works on internet explorer <laughs> Of all the browsers for it to work on, it's so funny. I'm really happy for all the speed improvements I made <laughs> getting this to run faster in the simulator, but it still runs so slow in the simulator. Because the simulator cannot use a GPU, so the graphics just run like 
software emulation mode. Okay, so we want to tap map zero, it works. Tap the ship, brings up the confirm. Let's tap home. All right, it worked. All right, let's check this out. See if we actually did that code right. So I'm gonna click there. It should actually work for this one. So V3IP, this is 670. If it's valid, it checks if it's a teleport destination. Get the world's teleport destinations. If it contains it, it's a warp. And then it goes and checks the position also, because some of them external positions aren't actually warps. Just, they're just direct. Okay, let's click on another one. Like, uh, oh, let's click on an item. Right, so click on an item. We should not have a position. Yeah, negative one, negative one. Good. Oh. Oh, really? Do you use the flash, though? Oh, and the other ones are HTML5? Okay. That makes sense. So the position is not valid. Good. So it doesn't have to go and check if it's a teleport destination. But still checks its pause, which is going to be like nowhere near the right. Well, actually. Oh, heck. That might not be the right thing. So if we click on the R button here. Oh, good. That does re equipping stuff. That. Let's see what that pause is. One fifty-five. Yes, I'm so glad this works all so well. Luckily, really, I should be checking the X. Two. So, like, what's that X right there? One ninety. It's like. 210. Yeah, okay, so we should be checking X right here just to double check that. But this is working great. I can't believe that works so well. Let's close the X code. Yeah, it is. It's totally optimized. It runs at 60 frames a second. Like I was saying, the simulator runs hella slow. And 105%, I'm not sure what you're see, where you're seeing that. Oh, were you seeing, oh, you were seeing that in Xcode? Yeah, that's because it's running in the simulator. Yeah. No, it runs totally fine. It could probably run faster than 60 frames a second on iPhone. It's really, it, won, it runs really, really well on my iPhone. And I have an iPhone 6, which is one of the oldest ones. The, old, the oldest iPhone that will be supported is the iPhone 5S. The 5 and the 5C have recently been uh, phased out by Apple, basically. They, you can't upgrade them anymore. So basically, Songbringer will only support 64-bit iOS devices, which is the iPhone 5S and up. And I'm not sure which iPad that is. But basically, it's because Apple's phasing them out. Apple's not, no longer supporting 32-bit devices. And um, it would basically be a bitch to try. I could, I could actually make it so it does work on 32-bit iPhones and stuff like that. But it would be hell. It would be a lot more of a work. So <laughs> I'm lazy. It, yeah, actually, I should, I should make it so it allows that. I should add a frame rate check in there yeah in fact I could I'll do that yeah I'll add some controls right now though they're, they're hidden but they're already in the game like it's it's like the Mac version can run itself at 30 60 90 what like or unlimited um, so yeah you would just send it to unlimited and you can see how fast you can get it to run
Teeks, what's up, man? Oh, they do? Really? That's awesome. What? That's so crazy. It's not, it's not working for you either? I don't know what's up. I don't know why the stream is just not working all of a sudden. It might be something with to do with like I had to restart the stream. <laughs> it works for you too? It's so crazy. Uh, I don't know what's up. If you're watching this on YouTube, we're having a little issue for the live stream right now. <laughs> it works like only in in Internet Explorer. I still call it Internet Explorer. It shall always be Internet Explorer to me. I'm never gonna call it Edge. It's not actually on the Edge. I know, I thought it was a local thing for you. That's so crazy that it's, it's like not just you. Wow. That's weird. Okay, so let's, I got, um, no more debugging. I click on the map, boom, it switches to the map. Click on the ship, brings up the warp confirm. Click on this, doesn't bring up a warp confirm because it can't warp there, you're in the dungeon. Click here, immediately brings up the warp confirm. Yeah, this is great. I got this all solved, man. Boom. So let's warp some places, let's warp to the ship. Boom. Yeah, Teeks, hi! Long time no see, man. It's if we put every user on edge. Okay. Maybe it, maybe it does deserve to be called edge. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I don't know. It, so, it might have had something to do, the reason the stream might be bugging is because I had to reset it on my end. Like my internet just all of a sudden died and I had to restart this. I had to like, I didn't shut down my software for streaming. I just simply reconnected the software for streaming. So maybe that was something to do with it. But still, it's weird that it wouldn't work in the HTML5 version, but it does work in the Flash version. Yeah, man, hello. How you been, Teeks? What's, what's new, man? Let's pause the game. And unpause, that works. Okay, let's warp some more places. Warp back to map zero. Let's go to the home screen. Let's warp to a teleport spot. Immediately brings it up, should. Good. Yes, this is working well. It's completely created bugs so every most common browsers stop working. <laughs> that would be funny. Oh my gosh, this is great. I can't believe this bug got all fixed so fast. Awesome. Okay. Let's check this in. Your job training's almost done? Right on, dude. Cool. What, okay, so what are you doing for a job, man? Fill me in, we haven't chatted in a while. So I'm just gonna review this code and then check it in. Okay, cool, that's pretty simple. You know what, this could be a function actually.
Let's make this a function. Here we go. Is warp confirm? Let's go static. Pool is <clears throat> programming stuff for a company that sells game. Oh, that's right. We did talk about this a little bit. Yeah. Didn't we? I think so. Good job, man. Congratulations. Uh, let's just call it is warp or external. Or or external or warp, whatever. Choice ref choice. Should be able to make this a const choice. Your crypto trading bot is up. I'm making money. Sweet, dude. You wrote a crypto trading bot? Awesome. There, yeah, it looks nice and clean. So we got this little nice function called is external or warp from a choice. And um, now we can just say is external or warp from finger choice. Hopefully that works with a const. Basically that makes this section of code here a little bit more focused and dense, concise. Cool, that works. So let's just make sure it works one last time. Now that we just moved that into a function. Okay, so we'll click on the ship. Cool, brings it up. It's warp there. Now that we're on the ship, we can like warp to different spots like the home screen. I mean, that that should just bring that up instantly. Good. It should bring up a teleport pause right away. Good. That should go straight back to map eight. Cool. Let's warp back to map eight. No, wait. Let's go back to one of these. Let's go to the home screen. Cool. It's working. Oh, I guess let's make sure that if we press, click on something random, it doesn't really do anything else. Cool. Click on one of these. Cool. Let's warp back to the dungeon and call it good. Yeah, that's satisfying. Good. Okay, so now that functionally works, right? 
I, if I play this on my iPhone tomorrow and I want to do a whole run through the entire game, I can be confident that the the warping works and the items work. Like I can equip things by dragging stuff. I can warp it everywhere. All this is functional. But there is some, some UI goody things I'm gonna do. Like this should be bigger. You know what I mean? Like when you click on this and it brings up this warp confirm thing, that worked really, that worked, that was big enough on the, uh, when you're playing it on the desktop, but on the mobile version, that should be bigger or somehow more apparent that it's, that you should tap that again. Yes, it will be compatible with controllers. Yes, it will be compatible with Bluetooth controllers. Only the ones that are made for iPhone though. So iPhone has this thing called MFI, it's made for iPhone. Yes, TX, there's an iOS version coming. Um, and uh, MFI controllers, there's lots of them out there, but basically they have to have that MFI logo on them to be compatible so that you can use them for playing on iOS games. And all those, any controller that's MFI will work uh, with Songbringer. Um, so yeah, it will be compatible with game controllers. Um, I'm first, first thing though is to get the touch controls working really well. Like as well as I can possibly get them to feel and, and, and function and everything. Um, and then adding in gamepad support. Gamepad support will be easy because the game will function pretty much identically to the desktop versions with the gamepad. It's the touch controls that allow that are making me have to do a lot of custom things. But it's, all, it's pretty much finished. I mean the functional part's finished. I just gotta work on the little UI improvements and you know, cherries on top of the cake, you could say. So cherries on top of the cake or pie? I don't know. I don't really eat either of them. Allow warping to external positions and bring up Confirm faster. Okay. Next thing, I want to do one little UI improvement. When you drag items, let me show you what I'm talking about. I know, doesn't that suck? Yeah, I know, the good old Xbox controller does not work with iPhone. PlayStation 4 controller doesn't work with iPhone. The rad, dude, I have one of these things called an 8-bit dough, SNES 30 Pro. These things are so cool. I love these things so much. This thing is Bluetooth. It works on Android. And apparently this thing used to work with iPhones, but they took away iPhone support somehow. I don't know what's up with that. But this thing is a Bluetooth controller that is super dope, and I wish it worked on iPhone. Maybe they'll make it work on iPhone again. I don't know. Let me show you what I was just talking about there. If I uh, drag one of these items, it drags, it's cool, right? You can drag it around, you can drop it back in your equipment to unequip it, or you can drag it back up into any one of these equipment slots to equip it there, like if I wanna equip it here and overwrite the, the blink orb, boom. But here's the problem, when you're, on, when you're playing it on iPhone, you touch it with your thumb or your finger or whatever, your finger's covering up this entire thing, right? Even though I made this icon twice as big, your finger's covering it up completely. So what I need to do is just offset that position, put it like up like 20 pixels or so, so that it's it's above where your finger is. So you can, even though you're dragging around with your finger, you can still see it. Little tiny change. Let's get that fixed real quick. I know, but does are so cool, right? It might be Apple's fault, who knows? They might have stopped supporting it for some Apple-y reason. I think we're in, it's in drag, drag moved is the function we look at here. All right, Teeks, man, it was good chatting with you. Glad to hear things are going well. Yeah, man. Bye, dude.
All right, so let's go p.y dot y plus equals 20. <laughs> it might be that easy. This is one of those things I'll probably want to confirm on my phone right now. So I'll get Xcode opened so that I can run it onto my iPhone. I've got everything kind of streamlined when I'm in here in this uh, in iTerm, running, editing my code in Vim, and then building from Vim, calling Xcode build, and then launching it in the simulator even from the command line too. But when I run it on my iPhone, I haven't got up, I haven't set up any command line build for that, so. Let's get that building while we test it on the simulator. Okay, so if we want to drag. Yeah, cool. So let's see, we'll see if 20 pixels is enough. Let's drop it there. So you can tell it's like above my cursor now. 20 pixels might not be enough. We're running on the actual iPhone here. Oh, it looks like it's done already building. It's running on the iPhone and we'll just, um, I'm gonna tap around a little bit. You won't be able to see me running it on, on my actual iPhone, but um, I'll test it real quick and see if it actually is enough pixels. It's taking so long. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So bringing up the menu, dragging. Nah, 20 is not quite enough. Okay, let's make that. Shoot, 35 or so. And I guess I'll just run it on my iPhone again. So 20 pixels was... My finger is bigger than 20 pixels. We'll just call it that. This is great. It's all functional. I got a lot of the UI things going that make it make playing on iPhone on, on the touch controls feel right, feel good. There's a couple more tiny little things I need to do as far as UI goes. Like bomb quantities and cactus quantities don't appear at first. That's something I'm not sure why. Oh, oh, I think I just realized why actually. Oh, sweet. We can probably fix that on this stream, too. Okay, I'm bringing up the menu. Dragon. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Actually, now that I did that, 35 might be a little bit much.
Because it kind of makes you think like, oh, is am I supposed to be... Actually, I don't know. 35 is kind of good. If I'm looking at it straight down... Okay, maybe that is a little bit much. I guess 30 might be the nice in-between there. Oh, yeah. Was I down? Sorry about that. I was talking from down there. I'm thinking 30 pixels is going to be right there in the middle, the golden uh, middle ground, if you will. There it goes, installing. So I'm running again here on my iPhone, which is down here. So that's why you might not see me for a second because I'm tapping away on my iPhone. Yeah, that's better. Cool, it actually feels pretty intuitive. It basically just bumps up the position. So I'll show you what I mean in the simulator. Oh, that was... That's from a while ago. I used to stand all the time for my development streams. Um, now I'm in. I'm not in the same a, a place I was at when I started making this stream and making Songbringer. So now I'm. I don't really have the means to stand up and code right now in this current place I'm at. So when I get back to the United States in a couple of weeks. I'll, hopefully I'll be able to stand up some more. Okay, so now we confirm that. Let's close. Let's close Xcode again. Yeah, I was streaming in my closet. I had I had my laptop way up high on my top of my closet. So this is what just happened. Basically, if you pick up one of these, start dragging it, it's like above your cursor. So if you imagine this on the uh, on on a touch screen, if you're on a on a phone, it's going to be above your finger. So you can actually tell like, oh, I'm dragging something. So that's just a little touch that makes it way better. So you can actually see what you're dragging. These you can actually start dragging around, but you can't actually equip them. So it, doesn't do anything. Oh, you know what? I should make sure that this works on the ship. Let's go to the ship real quick. Uh, I'm in Thailand. Yeah, I've been in Thailand for the uh, last few months, just living here for a little while. I've actually lived here for almost six months now. It's been, uh, you know, great for my budget. <laughs> It's a very inexpensive place, uh, and you know, I'm a humble indie developer. I'd love it if I were rich, but uh, that dream hasn't come true yet. 
So let's see if we can equip things like this. Oh, it works! That's awesome! Should not be able to equip this though. Good! I don't know how this is working magically, but it is. Awesome, so I should be able to do an entire playthrough if I want to actually like craft items. Let's try and make an actual crafting move here. We'll, come, we'll craft some lightning bombs. It is kind of a weird country. I was in a big city for a while. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of that. There's a lot of like random loosey-goosey things going on. You're like, what? That does not seem safe. Cool. So we... Oh my god, this is working. Yeah! Awesome! I think we're almost ready for a playthrough. So it didn't re-equip the bomb. Why is the select not working? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's just because it's not equipped. Oh, because you can't equip here. Scooters, yeah, there's scooters. Everybody drives a scooter. I ride a scooter. I ride a scooter everywhere. It's actually really nice. I love scooters now. Okay, cool. That's super cool that that works. You can craft items and do all of your inventory management on the freaking mobile version. That was a tiny change, but a big difference. Okay, what should I do next? There is, um, there's one little issue with, I think I know what's wrong with it. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. If we start up the simulator, let's close it. Start Songbringer again. I only got a few more minutes left here until I got to call my mom for Mother's Day. But hopefully we can get this thing done too. Don't ask me why it does this sometimes. Freaking simulator just starts upside down. Okay. Okay, right. So bombs, right? Bombs have a quantity. It should say how many bombs there are right there. But it doesn't. But it does if I think I've pressed one of these. No. I actually have to use it, don't I? Yep, there we go. There it works. Okay, why, uh, the item quantity, because the scale, it's, oh, okay, wow. Uh. Thought I knew what was what it was exactly, but I'm not sure now. Um, HUD items. Here we go. Okay. So we add we add the quantity here in this set item sprite frame thing. 
Sets the sprite to visible. Lose all children. Creates a label. You should call her right now. Don't worry, she's not up yet. She's not even awake. Well, she's probably is almost awake now. But I got a timer, it'll go off, and I'll call her just the right moment. Okay, it goes a little bit deeper into this rabbit hole. Item quantity. Creates a label, sets its camera mask, Sets its position and its color, but that's it. It doesn't like change in, it doesn't set its visibility. Why, what's up with that? Is it not visible? Or is it just in? Am I working beside my game? Huh? What you mean? Oh man, what's going on here? Is it that the... Okay, let's set up a little like kit for all children, all the children of HUD item, looping underneath, set up a little function. Got to open Xcode again, because we're gonna have to debug this. Okay, int. Okay, there's what could be wrong is probably opacity. No, 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 man. No, Songbringer is a full-time thing. This is all I do for work. I have no side projects. If I had a side project, you Songbringer never would have came out. Songbringer required way more than a full-time effort. I worked seven days a week on Songbringer for over three years, and every single day that I worked, I worked over 10 hours a day. Like, we're talking way more than I should have. I got, I got stressed out, I got burnt out, freaking almost lost a relationship out of it, basically. Uh, I don't recommend working that much on a video game to anyone out there. It's one of the life lessons I've learned is that I really need to, I really need from now on, I need to not work more than 40 to 50 hours a week on my games. You know what I mean? That's my life lesson. Unless, unless I just want to burn myself out again. You know, I could do that again, but it's not cool. I'm still de-stressing from releasing Songbringer. Okay, opacity, it could be if it's visible. I think it's one of those things.
Yeah, so one of the things I've had to do recently is is like make sure that I take at least two days off a week. You know, that's something huge. That's really affected, really like made me less stressed out in general. Is just taking a day off, day or two off a week, and it's it's just so much healthier than I used to be as far as development goes. This week I took some days off in the middle of the week, so now I'm working on the weekend. It's nice being your own boss, that's for sure. But it's for me, I'm an, a really ambitious person. Oh, there's my alarm. Okay, I gotta shut the stream down. But let's see, I'll, I'll debug this thing real quick. And then I'll shut the stream down. If this starts running. So what HUD item? This is button B. Yeah, this is the bombs. This would be the one that would have a children. Okay, so what's up? Oh, it's opacity zero. It's visible. Oh no, that's that that one. Where the heck are we? Oh, there, opacity zero. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Vis it's visible, but it's it's definitely not opaque at all. So if we keep running. Okay, I'm going to let it run for a second. Let this flux finish here as it opens up. Okay, so you can clearly see that the bombs do not have a quantity. And if I set a breakpoint here, it should catch this. And we should see that, aha! Okay, so it is opacity zero. That's the problem. And if I go back to the event handler mobile's animate function, we should see that it does have an so the outer button has an opacity of 255, but the HUD the actual item description there doesn't. So I should basically just create a thing that goes and sets the opacity here for children. All right, so there you go. We've got a couple things done on today's stream. That was great. Um, yeah, being able to warp to the ship from on the mobile version and um, just being able to drag items a little bit easier. Those are two cool things. And this last thing, I'll get this finished later after I call my mom for Mother's Day. Well, cool. Thanks for watching. It was good chatting with you all. And we'll see you all next time. Cheers, everybody.